Hey guys, thanks for joining me today on another episode of Cartels on Earth. Um, today I'm going to give you a little bit of a background on La Kika. Um, well, alias La Kika, whose real name is Dandeni Munoz. Um, I'm sure we all know who he is. He is um, accused of the... He was accused and is serving 10 life sentences plus 45 years in prison for the um, supposedly being responsible for the air bombing of Avianca Flight 203 in 1989. Um, I want to give you guys a little bit of background on him and just talk a little about it with the, his entire case, mostly because um, after this, you guys will find the video in regards to uh, that I made in regards to the letter that I received by him uh, not too long ago. So I just want to give a little bit of background on him, um, you know, and touch base on what how how everything went down with him and why he's such a big player in the cartel more so afterwards and not really during um so uh we all know who he is he's been portrayed in narcos he was heavily portrayed in narcos um he um he's considered one of the top sicarios in the cartel he was considered one of the top sicarios for pablo escobar um, his brother uh, also just happened to be a member of the cartel, uh, whose the alias was Tyson. Um, uh, now, La Kika um, has been in prison now here in the U.S. for 28 years, if I'm not mistaken, 20, 28 years. Um, he was captured in on September 25th, 1991, here in New York. Uh, in particular in Queens on Northern Boulevard in 108th Street. Um, I actually did a little video on my Instagram uh, when I did Hunting Narcos, um, which gives you a little recap of the exact location where he was captured. Um, he was being followed. They knew he had arrived in the U.S. at that time. Uh, they arrested him on a false passport charge. Uh, the FBI was following him and the DEA. Um, Supposedly, they had said that they were they knew he was coming, and they were concerned because they thought he was coming to plan an attack on the UN. Uh, there was supposed to be a UN assembly coming up um, around that time, and so that was their concern because um, earlier, but I think about eighteen months ago, eight, a year to eighteen months earlier, uh, at that time, President Bush was scheduled to arrive in Cartagena, in Colombia, for a Latin American summit, uh, and uh, there was this talk of the possible assassination um, by Pablo Escobar uh, against uh, President Bush. So the theory was that he was being watched because they knew he was coming, they knew who he was, and it just happened to be that he was here and there was going to be a UN assembly in New York City. Um, he was accused of uh, blowing up the plane, uh, Avianca Flight 203. He was accused of being the mastermind behind this um, attack. Um, and he was sentenced, like I said, to 10 life sentences. Um, his case has, drawn, has always drawn a lot of attention um, from the public, from ex-cartel members, and even from the government of Colombia. Um, the cartel members, ex-cartel members, um, in particular El Arete and Popeye, um, have both pretty much vouched for him in saying that he was not responsible in any form or way for this attack. Um, El Arete even went on went far enough to say that he was responsible for the explosion of Avianca Flight 203 and the placement of the bomb on board. Um, he took credit for it, and the Colombian gov government did charge him for that, and he was sentenced to 20 years in prison for both the Avianca 203 bombing and uh, the DOS bombing, which happened, if I'm not mistaken, barely 10 days after the Avianca bombing uh, explosion. Um, the DOS bombing happened December 6, 1989, and Avianca happened November 27, 1989. Uh, and Arete took credit for both, and so and on top of several other crimes, and so he was sentenced to 20 years. Uh, he ended up only doing eight years uh, in prison, and uh, he was released on good behavior, and which um, obviously, I mean, he took credit to it, and he must have done something because the moment he walked out of prison, he was shot at several times by a Sicario from Pablo Escobar. Um, he survived, and now he lives in Spain, but nonetheless. Um, so you have El Arete who took credit for it and the Colombian government um, charged him for that. 
Uh, you have Popeye who stated many times that he was not responsible for that. But while Popeye was not responsible for the attack, he can he says and he's vouched that Lakika had nothing to do with it. Um, you also have the at that time the uh, top attorney general for Colombia whose name was Gustavo de Leaf. Um, who was also portrayed in the show Narcos. So if you watch Narcos, he was portrayed in Narcos. In particular, I believe the first season when um, Pablo Escobar's family is trying to get to Germany and they don't let him and Pablo Escobar calls him um, for help uh, as being Colombia's top cop. Um, this particular gentleman, uh, Mr. De Grief, uh, who uh, did not have uh, any um, he was very certain that La Quica Dan Dani Munoz um, was innocent uh, so much that he wrote a personal letter to the presiding judge over the case uh, that was trying Dan Dani Munoz alias La Quica in the United States and in this letter uh, Mr. Gustavo de Grief stated that Colombia had absolutely no proof to connect Dan Dani Munoz to the uh, bombing, the so-called bombing of Avianca 203. So here you have the top, uh, pretty much, law enforcement official in Colombia uh, writing a letter to the, Col the U.S. government and the judge who's overseeing this case and telling them that Colombia has no evidence whatsoever. Um, what ended up happening with that was um, the U.S. and the uh, courts pretty much told the press that yeah, this letter um, was useless and w had no merit, mostly because the person who wrote it, Mr. Gustavo de Grief, had ties to the narcos and the cartels in Colombia. So he was someone who had, they were saying he was someone who had been purchased by Pablo Escobar, the Medellin cartel, and this letter was just you know a form of trying to be on the side of the cartels because they were paying him, which was obviously very untrue. Um, Dandeni Munoz. Uh, there, there were two trials for Dandeni Munoz. The first one was a mistrial, and the second one that happened about a year later uh, was the one that sent him to prison for the rest of his life and ten lifetimes plus forty-five years and a day after that. Um, so I mean, you know, we we kind of know the background of him mostly. A lot of people don't know the little bases of it. Um, he he went on record to say that. Most of the people who came and testified against him, he had never seen in his life, and that it was a, a sham 